I'm Ruben Lenten, and in this video, we're going to cover the importance of good edging techniques and how you can use these key tips to improve your high wind as well as your light wind riding. Later in this video, we'll be covering details like the most efficient wind window positions for your kite, how your board interacts at its best in the water, how to know your limits and select the perfect kite size, how different board shapes can help you improve your power management and much more. So let's get into it with breaking down examples of good and bad body positions. One common mistake a lot of riders make is that their body position is off. They're either hunched over too much or just not riding on the rail enough. So what you really wanna do is make sure that your hips and your shoulders are aligned with the direction of your board. And then if you want to ride upwind, you just want to lean back, lean on the, put more pressure on the back foot really ride on that rail, really engage the rail instead of riding with your board too flat. And to ride a little bit more upwind, just open up the shoulder a bit more so you can really lean into it and focus on the direction that you want to go. So in light winds, what you want to do is not to edge or block too hard. You really want to yeah, be fluent and a bit generous uh, with the power. So you want to be a little bit more straight on the board because with light wind, you don't have that much power. So you don't want to lean too aggressive on it. You really want to go with the flow and really play with it. Still go upwind, but it's a little bit more up straight. Instead of in stronger winds, then you want to really lean back, put pressure on that back foot, engage your rail, and keep your speed like that. Also in light winds, you will have your kite higher. So you can catch a bit more wind. You have a little bit more, yeah, more lift, less pressure on the board. And in strong winds, you really want to keep the kite low edge harder, lean into it, so you really can control your speed. And what I always do in stronger winds or in lighter winds, whenever I steer my kite down, I sheet the bar in. When I steer the kite up, I sheet out. So the kite really climbs faster from the front lines, and then you can dive again to scoop more wind and really sheet the bar in for power, then sheet out. And this is how you can kind of give the kite more speed to get more power out of it. So in light wind, just be a little bit more forgiving on the kite, be a little bit easier on the edging and just a bit friendlier, I would say, just to maintain your speed. Whereas in stronger winds, you really want to hold your edge, put your kite low. And I really love the edge for this because most of the kites, when you kick your edge and you really put a lot of pressure and power on the kite, it loses its power because it climbs to the edge of the window and it just kind of dies. But with the edge, it doesn't do that. It holds the power and you can kick as hard as you want and you just keep gaining speed, which I love. To have proper edging, it's important to ride your kite in the sweet spot. If you ride too overpowered, it's gonna cost you a lot of energy to hold the kite down. You're gonna waste a lot of energy to, yeah, just basically edge and kick against it. And most of the times when you're overpowered, it's just really hard to get a proper takeoff. You most of the times get pulled off your edge when you steer your kite up. So really selecting the right size kite to find the sweet spot for each session is important. Try and find the sweet spot, select the right kite so you can really control your edging and really have proper technique on the takeoff. The board plays a massive role in managing your power and your speed. Beginners often start out with a massive board, really flat, just so they can get up and right and focus on controlling the kite first because that is mostly the tricky part to, to manage in the beginning. But once you start improving, you can grab a little bit of a smaller board, maybe with a little bit more rocker, so it's a little bit more playful uh, and it softens your landings. And it is really nice to have a slightly bigger board in your quiver as well, so that you just get the most out of your kites. You're always thinking about how can I ride today and you're thinking about grabbing your biggest kite, but imagine combining your biggest kite with a bit of a bigger board, you will definitely be riding earlier. So it's really nice to have that board in your quiver I ride a 138 Torque, uh, which is over here. I love this board as it's uh, got some nice rocker. The advanced bottom shape with the quadruple concave and the channels just gives me ultimate grip and I love grip. But the rocker still makes it playful so I can still sw switch it around to toe side easily. The outline is super nice so that I can still carve around and yeah, the wide square tips just give me a lot of control at takeoffs and landings. On the other hand, we got the Code V3, another awesome free ride and big air board from Ozone. But I highly recommend you to change your setup, uh, maybe swap around with friends, do some demo boards, um, so you can really get 
confident and knowledgeable about the board characteristics that are out there and just find something that suits you the best. So besides making sure you have the right size board for your height and weight, it's very important that you have the right stance, not too wide, not too narrow. And how you can check this is actually by stepping your foot straps and just basically doing a simple squat. And if your knees don't go past your toes, then you're pretty good. If your, nose, if your knees are not really bending in or out, then you're good. So step into your board and really feel if you can make a proper squat and your knees and ankles and everything is not going out of place too much. Because if you have a hard landing, you're gonna make a full on squat and you need to be able to take it. So there are some little fun tips and tricks and techniques you can apply to just yeah, have more board control and really get ready for better takeoffs and landings. And I love it to ride on the water and just slide around to toe side and then maybe do a nice carve or you actually just ride along, you're really at the upwind angle and you just kick with your back leg, stabilize yourself, get airborne and then land softly. Just do little bunny hops. It's really yeah, training your muscle memory to take off, to build up the tension at the upwind angle and it also practices your landings and also how to stay stable in the air. So practicing little hops is really essential and it just yeah, helps with your overall control. Then once you've got the, the little hops dialed in, then it's time to just get into some bigger takeoffs. And the takeoff is actually best when you look far ahead, you scan the water and you pick, pick out a takeoff point and you manage your speed towards there. Sometimes you have to go a little downwind, sometimes you have to edge a little harder or forgive and then boom, you just put your eyes on the prize and you manage your kite position to the right side or to the right position. You edge, 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 up and up and up and put the kite slowly up. And then at the last second, it's all about timing, the angle and the power that you take off with. And this will get you airborne. So once you had a good takeoff and you get airborne, then it's just really about stabilizing yourself. I always know that when I jump, that I move my kite past 12 because that's where the lift area is. And then past 12 to actually one or 11 o'clock. And then I keep it there until my highest point. At the takeoff, you will notice that I kick so hard that my legs are flying behind me. And then I'm bringing my legs to the front so that I tense up my stomach muscles and that I'm one with the kite. Then up until the highest point, I just keep my kite on the side and I look in the direction where I'm flying and that's downwind. If you look anywhere else, you might get out of control. So really staying stable by tensing up the core, keeping your kite on the side until the highest point, looking downwind. And this is how you just stable until the highest point and slowly move your kite to 12 and then drop, 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 and then move your kite and come in for that landing. Always land downwind and tilt to nose first. There we go.